Hi, welcome back to art class. This is Mrs. Poole. So today we have a little guest right here. This is my baby, Holly, and she's going to be running around while I do the video. And also we have a kitty in the background right here. So if you hear any voices or noises, just know that it's one of those two. So you don't have to worry. So today we're going to be working Wait, with two. Can I have a puppy? Yes, you can. Today okay. we're going to be working with two ideas. One is observing. Observing means to carefully look at something. And the other is shapes. And that is one of the elements of arts, and we will review that. But first, it's, it's art, art history, history time. time. Hello, Leonardo. Well, hello there. So today we're going to also be talking about the artist Leonardo da Vinci because he was a master of observing. Observing means to look carefully at something. And it is a very important task for artists because it allows us to look at the shapes, look at the textures, and draw or paint them accurately. And also observing the world around us gives us inspirations and ideas for our artwork. Leonardo da Vinci is an Italian artist and he is a Renaissance painter. Renaissance artwork is usually very, very realistic because they did not have photographs at that time. So they painted instead of taking pictures to preserve images. He had interests in a lot of things. He was a scientist, a mathematician, he painted, he sculpted, and he also invented a lot of things. Some of his most famous paintings include the Mona Lisa, the Last Supper, and this big horse sculpture that's in the Meyer Garden is not by Leonardo da Vinci, but it was inspired by his drawings. And here's the original drawing that he did. You can see that he really looks carefully to the types of muscles that the horses have and how they stand. And that really shows in his artwork that he is a great observer. Now let's review the element of shape. The element of shape is one of the elements of art, which are the little parts that make up an artwork. Last week, if you're at Thornapple Elementary, uh, Mrs. Hayes reviewed the element of line. So today we're gonna move on to shape. If you're at Meadowbrook Elementary, we've, we have been talking about shapes and lines. And a quick review is that lines have a beginning and an end and shapes are closed. If it's open, it's a line. And if it's closed, it is a shape. The reason why I'm combining the idea of observing and the element of shape for this week's lesson is because it is very important to be able to observe the shapes and in order to draw accurately. So today it's going to be a drawing lesson, but if you would like to apply some of your painting skills, that is okay too. For this lesson, you're going to be observing. That means to look very carefully at your house or the building that you live in. You're going to go outside of your door and take a picture of the building or house that you live in. Make sure you're being very careful when you go outside, go with an adult, and make sure you're not in the street to take your picture. I'm outside right now. This is my house. That's my door. Looking around. And it's raining and it's snowing. It's really, really cold. So I'm going to turn around and take a picture of my house. When you do this with your house, make sure you're not in the street. Be very careful and go with an adult. Now I'm going to do snap a picture and I'm going to be doing a drawing of my house. If you're not able to take a picture of your house, or if you would rather do a drawing of a toy house or a playhouse, that's okay too. Once you take your picture, you can go back inside and observe. That means to really look at your picture and see what shapes you can find inside of your picture. Here's a picture of my house and I would like you guys to take a look at it and see what shapes you find by observing. The first shape that I see is a big rectangle for the shape of the house. I also see some smaller rectangles for the garage. Another rectangle that's skinnier for the door. The roof is a trapezoid shape. And more rectangles and some squares for the windows. 
If you observe closely, you can also see some squares and rectangles for the details, like the doors of the garage and the siding of the house. If you look even more closely, you can even see some shapes and the texture of the roof. Observing what you're going to draw and finding those shapes is always going to help you with your drawing. On your paper, first you're going to draw the big shapes that you see in the picture of your building. Then start to add the smaller shapes and add as much details as you can. Don't forget to draw the ground too. When you're finished with drawing your house, we're going to turn this into our dream house. So now you can envision, that means to imagine, and add some cool features to your building. I'm adding some new rooms on my roof with different shaped doors and windows and different shaped roofs. Oh, and I think I want a little kitty house on the side too. Maybe some more windows. Oh, and I just had a great idea. I think I want the roof to be a slide, and then we can jump off onto some trampolines. Oh, and what if I could climb onto the roof using a ladder? That would be quite fun. When you're finished adding to your drawing, you can start to color your picture. You can use crayons like I am, or you can paint the whole picture Feel free to use whatever you have at your house that you would like to try out for this drawing. Remember to try and develop your craft. That means to work as neatly as you can. For crayons, you'll want to press down pretty hard so that you get that nice bright color and good coverage. It is a good idea to color from the edges to the middle of your shapes. Oh, and I forgot to add my kitty to my kitty house, so I added that right there. This is a dream house. So don't be afraid to use unrealistic colors. That means colors that aren't real. My actual wall for my house is blue, but I use purple because I wish I lived in a purple house. Adding some gray to show that that's my slide coming from the ceilings. I think I want a rainbow roof color. And even though I'm going to keep my doors white, I'm still going to color it with my white crayons to make it look more finished. I'm also going to draw my clouds with the white, and I'm going to paint over it to make a resist painting. Here's a trick that I learned from Mrs. Jurgensen. If you color your paper with marker, and then go over it with just water and a paintbrush, it turns into watercolor paint. How cool is that? You can see that the watercolor paint that we made with that marker goes around the white crayons so that we can still see the clouds. That is called a resist painting. Make sure you're thinking about these goals for this project. One, to be able to observe your picture very carefully to find the shapes. Second, to use those shapes and put them together to draw a picture of a building or a house. And third, to envision, that means to imagine your dream house and to add shapes to it to make that dream house. And lastly, develop craft. Develop craft means to work as neatly as you can. And for this project, you can pick any medium you want to. You can do crayons and markers and add water like I did, or you can just do crayons or just markers, or you can paint the whole thing, it is up to you. I hope you have lots of fun with this project, and don't forget that you can share your work through our Zoom meetings, or through email, or through the Artsonia app. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with with your dream house. Have a good week!